Well, good afternoon and welcome to the second of our Holy Week devotions. This is the Tuesday of Holy Week. And uh, just as Paul brought us the reading earlier, we're particularly thinking now about the story of Jesus and the cursed fig tree. And what's that doing in the Bible? It seems like a rather strange kind of story, doesn't it? And you might ask the question, why did Jesus curse that poor fig tree? Is he being mean or vindictive against this fig tree? Uh, Or is he cursing the fig tree just because he can to show his power as the Son of God? Well, actually, if you look at the, uh, the eyewitness account that we find in the Bible, it actually gives us the reason. Uh, have a look at Mark chapter 11 and verse 13. And uh, just look at what it says there. It says that when Jesus came to the fig tree, it had leaves, but no fruit. Now, I find that very interesting because here's a picture of the fig tree in my garden. And you'll notice the fig tree in my garden is the other way around. It has fruit, but no leaves. And Jesus, seeing leaves on the fig tree, went to the fig tree to find fruit, but there was no fruit. It was a a barren fig tree, not producing fruit as it should. And so what does that tell us? What's this got to do with anything? Well, the fig tree had a very important part uh, in the Jewish nation and in the Old Testament. It points to the fig tree as a symbol of the Jewish nation. For example, in Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 13 and Hosea chapter 9 and verse 10, it speaks of the uh, the righteousness of the Jewish nation being represented by a fig tree. Elsewhere in the Bible, the blessings upon the Jewish nation are often described as every man being able to sleep beneath his own vine and his own fig tree. Uh, a sign of God's provision and blessing upon them. Now, what has this got to do with Jesus cursing this poor fig tree? Well, a little bit later on in Matthew's account, we get the parable of the tenants in Matthew chapter 21. And this is a story that Jesus tells. And it's about a, a man who sets up his own vineyard. He does all of the hard work. He, he plants the vines. He sets up the buildings and puts a wall around it. It's his vineyard. By the sweat of his brow, he did it all. And he goes away into another country. And as he, he goes far away, he leaves tenants responsible for his vineyard, which he had planted, with the idea that they would bring him some of the fruit of that vineyard. And so he sends people to them to collect what's duly his, and they don't want to hand it over. They like the wine, they want to keep the produce of the vineyard simply for themselves. And so they disrespect them, they they, uh, throw them out, they beat some. And so the man eventually, thinking they would respect his son, sends his son to them. And him they beat and they murder And the question is, well, what's going to happen to these tenants? Are they just going to be allowed to carry on uh, occupying his vineyard? No, that man is going to come and he's going to take that vineyard away from them and punish them for the crime of the murder of his son and failing to give him what is duly his. You see, the connection we find in verse 43 of Matthew 21. Uh, And that is where Jesus says, therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. Now, what Jesus is doing here is he's using that picture of a vineyard or picture of a fig tree to represent the Jewish people. Just as we were thinking uh, yesterday about how the Jewish people were no different from the nations around them. They were supposed to be different. The temple was supposed to be different, but they ended up like anyone else. You see, the Jewish people weren't worse than anyone else. It's just that they weren't any better than anyone else either. They were just like you and I, just like you and I. And so just as Jesus is saying here that the special place that they had would be taken away 
and it would be given to other people, non-Jews, the Gentiles. The door would be opened for them to come to God. Just in that same way, we see the gospel opened up to all people. But this applies. Just as the, the fig tree and the vineyard are a picture of the Jewish people, the Jewish people themselves are a picture of the nature of every single human being on this planet. That's you and that's me as well. You see, we all like receiving from God, don't we? We get life and breath. Uh, we get the, the food that we eat. We get the friends that we have. We have every day that we live as a gift from God's hand. All good gifts come down from above, from the Father of lights. He is a good and generous God. And yet just like a fig tree that has leaves to receive the, the rays of sunshine, but doesn't produce fruit, we don't want to give glory and honour to God that is due his name. And what a shame that is. What a shame that is. You see, the problem with that is, is that we're just like those tenants, just like that fig tree that doesn't give to God what is due him. And so we share the same penalty and fate as those tenants. Just as they they so wanted the benefits but didn't want the owner of the vineyard, we don't want God either. We want him out of the picture, which is why we murdered his son, Jesus Christ. And that's the shocking truth behind all of this, isn't it? That Jesus still hasn't gone to the cross yet. And yet he's telling this story of the, the parable of the tenants. He's showing where his life is headed towards, what is just about to happen, that he will lay down his life to open up those gates, that people like you and me can come to God, not off the basis of our own fruits, which we bring to God, but because he will provide the fruits for us, the fruits of his righteousness to draw us in to God. Now I'm going to finish there, and I hope you've been blessed by that message.